So you can now see what the airbrush has accomplished here. We have these blotchy little areas of fading and kind of mismatched color tone on the car sides here and then all of our work on the uh, scratching and pitting is blended in and is officially done now. So we're pretty much done with the uh, actual weathering of the car. We need to go back now and hit up some more spots. So we'll do the kick up on the ends, uh, the defined spray line. We'll paint the couplers and I'll go ahead and do the trucks and wheels real quick. Um, I'm not going to try to go into too much detail with this. You guys have seen enough videos where I've done my trucks. It's basically the standard acrylic grime mix of black and earth. Um, in this particular case, I usually try to go more black than brown. And then I usually just uh, do one layer of paint on the truck. And then I'll go back and add my powders and everything. The wheels themselves I'm going to be doing with burnt umber. Um, I used to use earth brown. I still do occasionally on certain cars, but I found that this uh, tone of grime works really well for the wheels. And like I said, I always just hit the uh, interior wheel face first. So I kind of go in order here, and then I do the inner face of the wheel on the inside of the truck frame, and repeat. I'm going to actually dry brush a little bit of white on here too and this is just kind of to represent some of the uh, mud splatter and such that you see kind of get kicked up on the wheels. I'll enhance this a little bit with some uh, powders later but this is just kind of the brush effect. You can also kind of hit up the tanks a little bit too underneath any kind of details. This works especially nice if you have like a hopper or a tank car uh, and hoppers especially because they have the base so you can do the defined kick up lines and you can put all the little streaks and everything in there so it's a cool little effect you can do but again this is another one of those things I'm going to do on all the wheels just to kind of enhance it a little bit you can kind of streak it up a little bit too like this so I've loaded a brush with earth brown chalk and I'm going to go ahead and start overlaying the powder into the wheels just a little bit and there's some guys that do some amazing work. Um, there's a model I mentioned before, Brian Banna, who does all kinds of different effects with his wheels. He'll overlay them with oils and then overlay, you know, several different kind of powders and chocks into his uh, weathering, and he can do some crazy effects that I've seen. But you know, I generally just put on the wheels one basic color, and then I'll mix like certain things for certain effects. But I don't generally get too crazy with my wheels, as you can tell. I just really overlay them with some chalk, you know just to add the difference in color but when you do it remember to just really hit up the bearings the little holster above the bearing is where you're going to see a lot of rust a lot of reddish rust the springs as well so that's an area you're going to see that a lot and of course the wheel faces themselves so the last thing I always do is I clean the wheels a little bit and I can do this two ways um, I used to just take a straight q-tip and scrub the tread of the wheel and then just the outer rim of the wheel itself because these areas usually stay pretty clean from the cars going through hump yards um, but in this case I'm going to use an exacto blade to just kind of cut into the paint and just clean these off since we got a pretty decent layer of paint on this and a lot of clear coat I'm going to again do this on all the wheels and then I'll take a q-tip and scrub the tread of the wheel itself, this part right here, to take all the clear coat, grime, paint, and everything else off. So we'll go ahead and paint the kick up now. Um, and like I said, that airbrushing helped to kind of do the heavy fan spray kind of a pattern that you see where just years and years of grime has built up and it's corroded the metal and paint. Um, but we need to add the actual individual lines. And so I'm going to take my fine brush and just add the streak spray here. And again, this is something I'll do on both ends. But these are just the defined lines here. And of course, as you guys know, I always like to hit up my couplers and uh, all these little detailed uh, parts like this with a nice coating of the fresher looking rust chalk colors like this. Uh, couplers in particular, they always get very, very grimy. And so I like to portray the uh, fresh grime with the powders and chalks, as you can see here. I'll put a little bit on the walkway as well, but this is an important area to get. So moving right along, we've pretty much gotten the chalk weathering tied up on the trucks. The couplers are done, the ends are pretty much done, so we can go ahead and start doing the final touches, which is basically adding the safety striping. This is usually something I wait till do till last. Um, and over here in the corner I'm using my Western Safety Reflective Tape available from Harbor Freight Tools. 
It's very inexpensive. It's only nine bucks a roll, but I mean, I have an infinite supply. This stuff has lasted me for years now. I'll go ahead and show you the roll here. This is it. To kind of reiterate that. And as you can see, I mean, I still have tons of it left. This isn't, you know, I'm not going to be running out of this anytime soon. I'll probably have this for another, you know, 100 years. So, <laughs> um, anyway, I have went ahead and cut out some strips. And I always use the same size. So I have like an actual, like, guide to how to cut these to scale size. So I have a few cut out. I'm going to be placing the bands um, horizontal across the car here. Uh, and again, refer to kind of prototype photos of a particular prototype you're trying to model here to kind of get them right. But basically, I'm going to uh, install them in the corners first. The long bands always go in the corners. They'll either be vertical or horizontal like this or like this. In this case, they're like this. So I'll go ahead and position this guy here across like this. And the nice thing with this tape, obviously, it has an adhesive backing, so it just sticks right on. But essentially, I'm going to just be putting these strips across the bottom here. So, two large bands and four small strips across the uh, bottom of the railing here. Usually, they'll work around these large details, and a lot of times they put, put the uh, stripes underneath the rail. So, I'm just going to be following the uh, position here. Alright, so one of the last things I'm going to do is go ahead and weather these stripes up a little bit. And what you see a lot of times when people put the safety striping on their models, especially after they weather them, they'll be perfectly clean. I see a lot of guys do this, and the thing is, when you look at real safety striping, a lot of times the safety striping will get weathered over as the car ages. And so, it's one of those things where small little details like this are what you want to pay attention to. A lot of people will just glance over this. It's the same thing with decals. Uh, if you put a fresh patch decal on a car that you just weathered, it's important that you take and put a wash over it to grind it over. You want everything to be blended together. So I take a lot of time to kind of uh, beat up my safety striping as well. Sometimes I'll actually, you know, chip them off, scrape them up, cut them up, and make them look deteriorated. In this case, what happens is you see a lot of the rust kind of streak over as the stripes sit on the car for a number of years the rust starts to kind of just basically pass over the stripe so I like to go back and just kind of blend everything together by painting the rust right over the stripe just like this alright so we got the uh, weathering on the stripes now alright so we got the weathering finished on the stripes now uh, I got the car sides tied together uh, we got all the details finished, the chalk weathering, and everything is done on the trucks. And as you can tell, the car is looking very great here. Uh, it's looking actually incredible. It looks uh, really nice. It's ready to go. And you can see again, before we end the video, you can see all the techniques we've done. Uh, from the rust pitting, streaking, we did the faded logos, we did, some, uh, we did the graffiti, did the safety striping. All with various different effects. We got the uh, beautiful beat up rail box logo there. There's another shot of the graffiti. There's the roof. The roof came out really, really nice on this car. As you can see, again, there's an emphasis on the uh, beat up lettering along with the roof itself. If we look at the trucks here, you guys can see the beautiful work on the trucks with the powders and everything. The ends are all done with the pitting and scratching. I put the safety stripes, the little smaller cut safety stripes on the end rib there. You see this a lot on these cars nowadays. And then on this side, the gra heavier graffiti side, we have more of the same from the scratching and pitting. Faded logo, got the graffiti and everything all hand painted. There's the beat up logo. That's, that looks really good though, I'll tell you what, that looks amazing. Wow. <laughs> and then you guys can see a bit of uh, graffiti I touched up there. And then the opposite end here as well. So it's all looking really good. I'm really happy with this car. 
to in total, this took me about, I'd say, um, almost 30 hours, I'd say, from start to finish. I mean, I've been working on it for uh, a couple weeks now, on and off. Um, it's finally done. Okay, so that'll pretty much wrap up this video. Uh, as you can see, we have the finished product here. Started off with a relatively boring Plain Jane Atherin 50-foot rail box and turned it into the rust box, as I like to call it. Yeah, look at that. Looks absolutely gorgeous. I love the rust and pitting and everything in the graffiti. Turned out really good. I'm really happy with this car. It looks outstanding. So I'm glad this video worked. Uh, this is a really good car for these kinds of techniques. So hopefully you guys can pick, uh, take what I showed, dissect it, and apply it to your own techniques. Like I said, I've seen a lot of people try to model rail boxes like this, and they don't just quite cut it. Cut it. There's always certain things that maybe someone misses uh, from beating up the logo, whether it's beating up the logo, adding the rust pits, scratches, and everything. Um, but I want to see more people try to get these a little bit more accurate. And so, you know, I'm not trying to criticize anyone here, but I just want to take a video like this, show myself do a car like this, and let you guys be able to see all the different techniques. Because a car like this, there's so much to it. I've never done a video uh, this extensive on all these techniques. And I want this to kind of inspire you guys and to be able to see how to do these cars properly. And I'm not saying you have to do everything 100% my way. I'm only showing it my way of doing something. You guys can take my techniques that I showed here and apply it to you, your own style and methods and try it out for yourself. That's all I'm suggesting. So, like I said, hopefully you guys like this video. I'm really happy with the car. It looks out, uh, absolutely outstanding to be perfectly honest with you. It looks hot. Really nice. So, I'll do one more rail box down the road here and another video. I think the next one we'll do will be a ghost lettered car. Uh, and to kind of give you guys a sneak peek of the material I'll be using, I'll probably be doing another Atherin boxcar, but here's the decals we'll be using. Yeah, ghost lettering. I found this company uh, thanks to a buddy who was uh, watching the video series on YouTube, and he sent me the link to this product, and uh, so I can actually do this car uh, pretty easily now. So this will be the next real box we'll work on in another video down the road here. So. And in the meantime, that'll pretty much wrap up this video, guys. Uh, I'll keep videos like this coming. I got plenty more projects coming in the future here, so I think it's going to be a pretty busy year of projects. Maybe I'll bring back some local, uh, more locomotive builds, too. It just kind of depends on the time, what kind of time and money allows, really, right now. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. Dan's Custom Trains is my Facebook page. My name is Daniel Arnold. You can follow me there. Check out more of my work. Follow. Uh, I am always posting pictures of like uh, customer projects, stuff I'm doing for customers, not just my other own stuff. Though I do post some pictures of my own stuff occasionally, so you guys can follow my work there. I'm also on Instagram. Cool Hand Daniel Five is my Instagram account. Uh, that is all lowercase. And then again, you guys can follow my work there, see what I'm up to, and of course subscribe here on YouTube for more content like this. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something from this video. I will see you down the road.